All right, in this test, we're going to be um, having a look into brush arcing um, across the commutator and the brushes in a, um, an electric motor. So apparently, it is due to flyback from the uh, coils of the motor. So um, our little setup here, we will turn that back on. We'll be using 3.83 volts, and it is coming from those two two-volt batteries that are hooked in series, which are relatively flat at the moment. So um, our meter, of course, is just reading the voltage across our battery. Um, the negative side is going to our copper plate, which represents the um, armature segments on your motor. And of course our brush will be an actual carbon brush from electric motor. So at the moment there's only going to be a 3 volt potential um, across our copper plate and our brush. And we're simply going to run that brush along the copper plate um, to represent the brushes running along the armature of our uh, motor. So, 3 volts um, to start with, run our brush up and down there as you can see I've been doing and we're going to check out the uh, arcing between the brush and the copper plate without any um, coils or inductors included in the circuit, it's simply a uh, dead short across the battery. What we're going to do then is um, we'll take our brush off of here We'll plug this lead onto one side of our rotor coil. We'll then come out of the rotor coil and uh, back into the brush, carry out the same test, which will now include this inductor, um, which we are being told is going to give us an inductive kickback, a higher voltage, so we should see high, uh, bigger um, sparks flying off our copper plate. Alright, so test one just uh, straight out from the battery. I'm not sure if you can see that, but you can see we indeed have a very nice um, arc going on with uh, about 3.7 to 3.8 volts. Quite large indeed. So, what we're going to do now is I'll just put the camera down right about there. We're now going to include the rotor's coil in the circuit. It's a bit loose that way around. Like so. Move that a little closer. So now our arcs should be bigger because we now have the in, are going to be um, seeing the inductive kickback from our coil. So we'll put that to the test. I don't know if you can see that, but there is some arcs there. But they are extremely small. Wondering where is this inductive kickback? It's supposed to be producing these arcs across the uh, budget. It's just not there. We have very small ones. Maybe. Oh. Separate that. I'll go and turn out the light. Make a little darker. And then we'll try again. 
and I'll put myself in the uh, light here. So yes, we can see very small ones there. So we'll just swap that all around again just to go straight off the battery. Like so. Let me try once again. Just with three volts, no so-called inductive kickback. And I think you will agree that the arcs are much bigger. Uh, next test. Um, clip lead getting clipped onto a uh, piece of wire, throwing sparks out. Uh, are also supposed to indicate um, high voltage, so we'll be back with that test shortly. Okay, we're all set up. I'm going to use my uh, little um, soldering wire holder here. Uh, the negative is going into one end here, just our clip lead made the job easy. On the other end we have a bit of wire sticking out and uh, we're going to um, use that as our representation of hooking our clip lead up there to show all this inductive kickback voltage. Still 3.8 volts. Um, so this is just straight off the battery, no inductor included. We'll try that first. Then we're going to uh, hook up the circuit back through our rotor coil back out onto the clip lead and uh, do some rubbing on the wire again and um, we'll see which one gives the biggest arc so apparently the bigger the arcs the more inductive kickback you have from your rotor coil okay so straight 3 volt battery or 4 volt um, and we're now going to fumble around and hook our clip lead on the end of our wire, like so. Oh, look at that. We're just about doing some welding. Lots of sparks. Okay, so now what we're going to do is take our clip lead off there. We're now going to include our rotor coil, which gives us our inductive kickback, high voltages, and lots of sparks we only get from high voltages when clipping a lead onto our bit of wire. So okay, we're now coming out of the positive side, going through our motor windings, um, back out, and now we're gonna fumble around again, put our clip lead on, and we'll see what happens. I don't know if you can see that. We do indeed have some uh, very very fine small sparks oh there was one and um, there are all good contacts 3.842 and I'll hook this straight up. You can see the battery voltage is dropping. Unhook it, climbs back up. So, no problem there. We do get very, very small sparks. But if we uh, bypass our rotor coil and uh, just go straight from the battery, you can see it's much more exciting. don't get anything at all. Oh, there was one. So there you go. Another myth busted in the arse. The arcing between the brushes is the current trying to flow, not high voltages jumping all over the place. 
and the reason is these coils are all looped together so um, you have just one big current loop around the whole rotor and there is never an open coil for an inductive kickback to come shooting out of the arcing of the brushes is the current trying to flow across that very small gap between the brush and the rotor the voltage determines as to how wide that gap can be before the current starts to flow but the arcing is due to current and as you can see our 3 volts straight off the uh, battery gives us a far better light show when we're trying to hook up a wire than um, it does when we run it through that coil alright so um, for those that think that arcing is to do with voltage it is not the voltage just determines as to how far the arc can jump it is actually current that causes all our sparks and light show and um, nothing to do with inductive kickback coming off of the coils alright thanks for watching hope that uh, clears that up a little bit